Lord God, we can only imagine what will be like on that day. May we continue to live according to your will. May your Holy Spirit descend upon us, guide us, help us to live life worthy of your chosen vessel. Lord God, may your Holy Spirit open our hearts and minds to hear, to discern only your voice through your servant. May our words of our mouth, may the meditation upon our hearts be pleasing to you in every breath we take, in every day, in every moment. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen. 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 You know, there is an article in the Atlanta Journal issued on June 5, 1997 about Clarence Jackson. Do any of you remember Clarence Jackson, who was uh, 29 years old and who was working at a small cleaning business to help and support his elderly parents. The article said this, the clock struck midnight. Comma, Clarence Jackson did not became turned into a millionaire. He, Jackson, bought a lotto ticket, winning it was worth $5.8 million. Now it's jog your memory. And he gave to his father, and his father didn't notice that he's a holding a jackpot lotto ticket, $5.8 million, until 15 minutes before the deadline. That's fortunate, right? But unfortunately, he didn't know that he could verify that ticket through a local lotto dealer. He waited until Monday morning to redeem his ticket at Lotto head headquarters. Guess what? It was too late. What is it like to lose $5.8 million you could have had? Can you imagine? I can only imagine. And this morning, our God invites us to imagine what would be like on that day when we are being too late, not ready to face Almighty God. What will be like? Will I stand and singing hallelujah or will I fall on my knees? Our God says what? On that day, we will be separated. God will judge us, sheep or goats. Well done, my good and faithful servants, or depart from me. I do not know you. And today's gospel reading, we learn that on that day, it will be separated wheat and weeds. Wheat is gathered into his barn, barn and wheat, uh, weeds. I, you you got to be very, very careful and correct me. I may say wheat and weeds different, I mean, the interchange, right? It's a totally different opposite, right? And weeds will be gathered together and turn into the 
burning hell, it's gonna be burned. So, are you ready for that day to come? Are you a wheat or weed? All right. Now, Judgment Day, I mean, the end of the world, it scares us. I am scared. I am scared to, 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 to see, hear about nowadays what's going on in the whole wide world. I mean, uh, the war in Gaza, in Israel, is uh, heavier, getting heavier and, uh, you know, worse than ever. And guess what? Last week, I've heard that uh, Russia or whoever shut down the airplane, the airplane, right? And innocent people died. I wonder, all those people, did they know it would be their last day? Were they ready? And today's gospel, Jesus telling us that in spite of weeds in this world, weeds, wheat, got to bear fruits of whole grain, right? So that in spite of what is going on, we get ready to meet our Lord Jesus when he returns or on our deathbed. Either way, imminent, Christ's return is imminent. You never know, you know, when you are born in order, right? But death comes to us not in order, and nobody is guaranteed to leave next day. That's why our Bible says, number your days, right? Live life as if as though this is your last chance, this is your last day. If we can live like that, then we can bear lots and lots of good fruits in spite of weeds and trials and tribulations, in spite of Satan's temptations, etc. Amen? So let us ponder upon this morning how do we bear fruits so that we can say, I am a whole grain, I am a wheat, then we. Amen. On that day, we all hope to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Don't we? Yes. So let us ponder upon that. I've come up with a three Ps. Pursue, pray, and practice. Pursue and pray and practice. Pursue holiness. Pursue holiness. How do you pursue holiness? Lay myself down at the feet of Jesus. Let him cleanse us, guide us, uh, work in us. And look at this, verses 24 and 25. And Jesus says what? The kingdom of heaven is this, right? Like this. What? A man who saw the good seed in his field, but what? While everyone was sleeping, the enemy came. And saw the what? Weeds and went away. Now, do you remember a parable of a sower? And sower was Jesus, and the seed was representing what? Seed was uh, the word of God, and uh, soil was representing our heart. So when you hear the word of God, it depends on your soil, it bears fruits or not, and easy going and whatsoever, right? But this one, this one, Jesus, the, the disciples asked Jesus to the, explain the parable of weeds in the chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 13, verses uh, 36 to 38. We didn't read it, but it said, Jesus says what? 
the man who saw the wheat, I mean, who saw the good seed was what? Who? Son of man, Jesus. And then Jesus said, good seed is what? The sons and daughters of heaven. And the field, in his field means this world, Jesus explained. And then the weeds are what? Sons and daughters of wicked one. So we can tell that's a Satan, right? Now, therefore, we can say, easily say, okay, we, us, are wheat, right? And them, whoever in the whole wide world, them, us and them, they are wicked ones. Us and them, right? But think again. I mean, a pastor's meeting, we were talking about this because this is lectionary reading. So every church who follows lectionary reading, they will talk about this this Sunday. So the pastor said, I can spot a weed and a weed in my congregation. He says, weed, 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 weed. I says, really? I feel like I am wheeze at times. I feel like I'm a good sheep following Jesus very well, obeying his voice. My sheep hears my voice and obeys me. And I, I feel like a good sheep, but at times I hear him and I go do otherwise. I'm like a goat, right? We are easy to say, well, that's wicked. I am a good people. But look at this. Jesus, we were in the world. We were following the desires of our flesh. We were condemned because of our sin. Jesus came and sowed the seed. We accepted him. So we became sons and daughters of God. But the we's, them we's in our lives. And we are challenged, we are influenced, we are intertwined with the we's in our lives. So I can imagine on that day, God's going to look at me, cut off the weeds that entangled me, and try to save the whatever grain that I am become. Don't you think? Look at these ohia beams. These beautiful beams. It was like this, this thick originally. And it was built in this above the ceiling, 1840 something, right? 43, we, our church was found, but this building was not that built on, you know, on that day. But, but anyway, it's uh, 170 something years old, oh yeah, beams, beautiful beams. But years of uh, neglect of termite, termite attack, and we found ourselves this uh, Ohia beams no longer can hold our roof. So we have to redo the, our ceiling and structure and the roof. And these are whatever was saved from termite, termite's attack, sort of speak, and beautifully decorated our ceiling. Now, God created us in the beginning. He says, good, right? We were so good. We were created according to God's own image. Then what happened shortly after? And then we got tainted. We got termite infestations. And what? Jesus came spray, right? His blood on us. So all the termites in us died off, right? 
And if we continue lay ourselves down to be holy as it was, it, then we will preserve our whole self, will be whole grain in the end. But if we were neglected, how much of us going to be left standing in his presence? Some of us can be speck. Some of us will be big, right? But all of us can be big, whole grain when we pursue holiness, when we pursue laying, letting go of my pride, letting go of my right, letting go, letting go of and submit ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit, guided and convicted and repent of all our sins, we can fumigate ourselves by the blood of Jesus every day. No termites will be there in the end. Don't you think? Amen. And I hope and pray that we all be good, solid, good grain that that, that comes from the good seed that Jesus spread, sowed in the beginning. So when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen? So first thing, that's how we can bear fruit in spite of weeds, in spite of termites, in spite of cockroaches, in spite of we can live life worthy of his sacrifice. Amen? Amen? And the second one is what? Pray. See, as you sing, you can tell, you know, our songs, our Bible passages, all tied together. Did you notice? Verse 25. It says what? While everyone was what? Sleeping, and the enemy came and saw the weeds. So please do not fall asleep. <laughs> then people say, hey, I've got to sleep at least eight hours, right, in order to function. But please do not sleep while you are hearing the message. Our enemy is real. It's a dead, half dead, but it's a real. It shows up, creeps up in our lives all the time. That's why Philippians, I mean the Ephesians, Ephesians, open your Bible, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 says something like, be alert and what? Keep on what? Praying, hallelujah. Someone is awake, keep on praying. Because you know, the enemies saw the weeds. If we can tell that was a weed that enemies are sowing, right? Then we could scoop it out right away, right? But enemies, Satan is a, a deceiver, counterfeiter. You know, who in the world that going to go to bed with a full of cockroaches. Who would uh, uh, live in the house uh, with a termite infested? If you have uh, seen it, know it, who would do that? Would you? Nobody. And I told you one time, treat sin as a dog, like a doggy's a slimy poop. Remember that one? And who wants to eat that, drink that? Huh? If uh, you look at your beer, bottle of a beer, whatsoever, your choice of a drink, and you, you, it appears to you like a sick people's urine, would you drink it? No way, Jose. Not right in mind. You wouldn't do it. But, so therefore, 
Satan would not approach you with uh, like a monster or gruesome cockroaches or termites or centipedes or whatsoever. They will appear to you, hey, nice and easy. Nice and easy. You know what we say? Well, everybody else is doing, so maybe I guess I, it's fine. They are doing fine. They, 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 make, they are rich, and they, you know, guess I can do that too. Well, this is easier to handle. I mean, pain kills me, so I can just take pain medication. It will relieve me. And after pain is gone, I like that feeling. It was easy. I had a lots of uh, relaxation. Well, I can take it. I can get rid of my problems, my headaches, when I drink. So I better, whenever I get into trials and troubles or heated argument with my spouse, Hello, my choice of dealing with that. Everybody else, shot of tequila, whatsoever. See, Satan, the, the de destroying us in a deceiving ways. You know, Second Corinthians chapter eleven talks about Satan is a master of a counterfeiter, and the Satan transformed himself into the light of angel. And Satan transforms workers, wicked workers, as though apostles. Satan transforms wicked laborers, servants, transform into devout Christians. You hear about wolf in a ship's clothing. They were sold in the field, in the world, and they were sold in the faith community. And we've got to be alert and be Awake, keep on praying to the will of God. You know why praying works? You see, the, the parable in the farmer cannot transform weeds into wheat. But our God can. We were all once sinners, evil, right? And God transformed us to be sons and daughters of him, and that means that he can transform the weeds into wheat, right? So when we have a weeds in our lives, part of me or part of an individual or whatsoever, we've got to pray to the Lord. Lord God, can transform them into, transform us into good seed bearing fruit. Amen? So keep on praying. Keep on praying. Now, lastly what? Practice what? Amen. Practice. whole lot of things. But today, we've got to concentrate on practice to accept, practice patience, practice letting go. All right. Now, the workers, verses um, 28 or so, and the workers noticed concern about weeds in the field. So the workers came to Jesus. Hello, Jesus. You saw the, um, the good seed didn't you? But there's weeds growing. So Jesus told the enemy, you know, planted. And then, so should we pull them out? 
And Jesus said what? No. Why? Let them grow together until the harvest. And this is why. The weeds intertwine with the wheat. So Jesus' concern is what? He doesn't want to lose any wheat. You know, we've seen this when you pull out, when the church has a conflict, and uh, we say, that's weeds, right? Weeds going out the door with the what? Weed. Many people go out with the weeds, right? That's why, first of all, when you have a conflict, do not name and reject those, but love those, accept those in God's love. And uh, Romans, I never knew Romans 14.4, 14, 14, 4, I believe, check it out. It says this, who are you to judge someone else's servant? His master will judge that he shall stand or fall. So we have no right to judge. We are not even qualified to judge. I can't tell which is weeds and weed, even our own garden. The weeds look like a flower to me, yellow flower to me. And spiritually, nobody can tell who, which is weed or uh, weeds or total of you are weed or wheat. Maybe it's a sprouting real solid good wheat inside of in the bushes of a weeds. You can't tell until the very end. Only God has power, authority, it's his purgatory, so don't judge anybody, anything. They are not your servant. She's not your servant. He's not your servant. They are God's servant. Let God judge what they are doing, what they are serving. Mind your own business. Matthew chapter 7, I believe. If you judge others, you'll be judged. And you'll be not only judged with the same measurement that you use, you'll be judged. So don't judge. And the Romans chapter 14, verse 1 says, accept those weak people. You know, the wheat is uh, germinated later and it's growing in an immature stage, the farmers say it looks like a weed. You never know how strong that weed growing later time will be. So be patient, letting go of your right to judge or your right to revenge, or your pride, anything, everything, letting go. And let God do his job. Do you trust God? Yes. Do you trust he will do a great job? Yes. Do you trust that he has, uh, uh, his righteous will prevail? Yes. Then why bother to interfere him, right? L leave that judgment onto God and wait upon the Lord. Practice acceptance. Patience, practice that I have no right to judge anybody. Amen? Amen. You know, um, what's his name? A long time ago, Mr. Um, Paul Waite um, invented the concoction that mixing, flavoring, uh, of uh, um, gelatin, and his wife called it what? Jello. Do you remember? A long time ago, he was he invented that concoction. Con how do you say? 
Did I say it right? Concoction. And so he was on the business selling that his invention, concoction, and nobody really buys them, you know? So he was um, kind of impatient. And so he sold it to a man with $450, all right? Now, years later, none of his descendants will receive any royalties from Jello, 1.1 million boxes of Jello sold every day. Can you imagine? That's what impatient did for you. Mr. Wait couldn't wait. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we are quick to admit we are impatient. How many of you are very patient? Or you need a patient? Nobody's raising hand. Oh, you're good. <laughs> I am quick to admit I am impatient. You know why? Because impatient sounds like it's not a big deal. I won't admit that I committed adultery if I did. You know what I'm saying? Adultery sounds serious sin, but impatient sounded, you know, cute. <laughs> so we say, I am impatient. Our Lord God says what? Well, be patient with one another. Let them grow and mature. As our God has been patient with you. My God was patient with me for 40 years. And longer he's going to be patient with me. As God, because God loves me. If we are followers of Jesus, we've got to practice every day. And acceptance and patience. Got it? That's how we can bear fruit, we can become whole grain in spite of weeds in our lives. Amen? Amen. Philippians 1.6 said that the one who began a good work in you. What is that? Began a good work. The one who saw the good seed in this field the one who came to you when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the spirit of living God in you, will carry it out. What? Your salvation. We were justified, and we are on to work out your salvation to sanctification. That sanctification will be done by his power, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I know for sure if we let ourselves be submitted, pursue holiness in Christ, the blood of Jesus, and we keep on praying to the Lord, the will of God, we keep on be patient, then we will be coming out as a whole grain. Not much of us have to be burned in hell. Amen? Amen. What a greatest. This is uh, not only judgment day. It is about God's grace. How, our God, how much our God loves us. And that's why God doesn't want to destroy any of us during our journey. He's a patient and watching over us, guiding us. Hallelujah. So will you be stand on that day singing hallelujahs or will you fall on your knees? Everybody shout. Yes. Yeah, I will be singing hallelujahs. Amen.
In order for us to do that, what should we do? Free peace? Pursue? Praying? Amen. That's when God's going to bless your socks off. Amen? You're very smart cookies. Let us pray. Our Lord God, we give you thanks for your word, for your grace. Oh, Lord God, at times we are scared. When that day will come, what will be like? But as long as we are in you, you are in us. We are walking with you, guided by your spirit. Oh, Lord God, nothing to be afraid. We are going to live life as if this is our last day. Oh, Lord God, help us, guide us, empower us. Live life with a certainty. Live life. Be powered by your 